Okay, we are here on Sunday, the 17th, I think, of um, February 2019, and we are in the integral chat. And at the moment, we are in five. Damiano uh, fell out, and oh, here, here, here he is. And we hope we will be even more. Anyway, um, we, I think we start with a uh, check in. And I would like to, you, you can say whatever you like, but also what you would like to talk about today. And so we, we figure out where we, where we go. Uh, I'm Heidi Hernlein. I'm in Italy in wonderful spring weather at the moment. It's really beautiful. And I did some olive pruning this morning. And then I had a, a, a lunch with Italians, Finland people and myself. And now I'm here. And hoping, uh, yeah, you, you uh, introduce yourself. I have a telephone call. Hi, everybody. I'm Damiano from Italy. Happy to be here. Don't really have anything in mind to talk about today. I'll be happy to chat about anything. <laughs> okay, I'll just check in. I'm Ron from uh, Concord, New Hampshire, the United States. And we're in the uh, snow belt <clears throat> area up, <laughs> up near Canada. And yet the weather is beautiful. Um, and I just <clears throat> come in every day uh, for the walk with my lab so I get some good exercise. But um, the reason I'm here is I don't know how I get into the group, but I'm excited that I am. Um, <laughs> somewhere clicking, clicking away on the Indian website. Um, but I wanted to get into a group, and um, I really feel good already being with you guys. And um, <clears throat> I guess I just want to expand my um, ability to articulate and um, um, experience more uh, the expansion that Integral, I find, gives me. And um, in, in my um, schooling, they're going to be going into uh, altered states or the different stages of development with meditation. So that's kind of where my focus is right now. But um, it's just good to be here. And uh, so, you know, good. <laughs> I don't have any more to say either. We've reached uh, our minimum quota of Karens. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm poor. I'm in England. Um, I feel I feel pretty excited. Um, I think my way of explaining as well it probably relates to my interest was a bit spiral dynamicsy. Um, like I've been thinking of how there's so much kind of emergent uh, quality and kind of awareness of like evolution. So it's kind of exciting to get on a call with a bunch of integrals, integral types. Um, and this week for me has been quite fun. Like I had this real thing of being really interested in um, orange, like business, wanting to actually do things in the world, kind of being a bit at times um, kind of brutal with the facts or uh, kind of being rational. And um, I don't know if people are familiar, like in America, they have a TV show called, I think it's Shark Tank. And over here, it's called Dragon's Den. And it's basically this thing where you have these five kind of awesome business moguls and people come and pitch to them. And for some reason, I was just just watching like video after video of this stuff, just kind of like lapping up kind of what felt like the best of orange, um, which probably there's probably something in that that I'd, that I'd probably like to talk about. Um, but yeah, that's that's me. Hey, I'm Ryan from uh, Portland, Oregon. And uh, yeah, nice to meet you, Ronald, and, and welcome to the group. Uh, so I just I just thought I'd throw out three um, things I've been thinking about this week that potentially for discussion. Uh, the first one is what are some aspects of unhealthy yellow or teal, and how do we be mindful of that? The second one is inspired by uh, the thread I made on the forum, which is what is your biggest disagreement with integral theory or Ken Wilber, and how could the theory adapt to accommodate that? or amend that. And the third one is how to tell or how to analyze if someone is integral. 
and there was I've, I've been part of a lot of debates about like people are saying Barack Obama is integral people saying Jordan Peterson is integral people saying that they're not integral and I'm just curious what is people's criteria or metric for how to analyze someone's if they're second tier or not so those are just some things I thought would be uh, interesting to discuss Karen what would you like to do or what would you like to introduce your week, your state of mind today or whatever your desires? Well, good morning, Ronald. I'm Karen from Austin, Texas, and good morning, everyone else. Um, <clears throat> you know, I've thought about this since we've met last, and, and as I, I've said before, I'm more of a feeler and more, <clears throat> pardon me, intuitive and I'm here to learn and um, I listen to you guys and you are more, um, I want to say intelligent, but more mentally intelligent. I'm, um, my intelligence is around kinesthetics and um, feeling and intuition. So when it comes to speaking this, it's more difficult for me to talk about the concepts and the terms. And I love listening to you guys talk and, and feeling the response to it. Um, I, um, I watched Ryan and um, Damiano, um, the YouTube that you guys did, and, and was very impressed. I did hit a like on there. And um, I'm just, you know, I, 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 I know what I feel, and I feel what I know. And I'm grateful to all of you for your um, opinions. And... Um, because I haven't, I've only read about this and I haven't really been able to talk about <clears throat> the actual philosophy of integral. You know, I, I know a lot of, well, I don't know a lot, but I know a number of integral people and we talk about stuff, but we don't speak in terms. Whenever I ask somebody if they've heard of Ken Wilber, I get, I see their eyes roll back in their head. And so I haven't really found, because they're just, they're so complicated, it's so heady and um, I haven't really had the opportunity to speak about this and I don't have a lot of practice speaking about it. You know, I, I sent out a little bit of part of the, the book and I've, I've had this experience and my other main experience is listening to Jeff Salzman and I just love listening what he has to say and perhaps in the future, maybe we could pick one of his talks and have a discussion around it, but that's, that's about, that's all I have to say. Thank you. I find it interesting because Karen, with your intuitive feeling capacity, you will have a completely different approach uh, to, to, for instance, to when, when the question is, what is integral? Who, who people is integral? You will have a, a different nose for that than we, we think it out, you know? And I, uh, if we want to go into this topic, I find it interesting. I also find interesting that what you said, what is in the forum, what is the biggest, the biggest disagreement with integral. I saw there was somebody posting about um, this, let's say, bias of integral people to be normally highly educated and in a better uh, social uh, state. So that uh, he was saying that he, he is living from one paycheck to the other and, and uh, never feeling, never felt in his life the security which he intuits that most people who are in the integral um, uh, area, let's say, um, uh, don't have. Most people seem to have a school education and so on and live in, let's say, um, secure uh, uh, environment. So I found this interesting. Um, so for me, it's fine. We seem to stay in, in six, uh, whatever we want to talk about. It's funny you, you mentioned about the, uh, the felt experience, like something that maybe the Karen <coughs> May bring and then there's also kind of intellectual debate because I notice in myself over about I don't know a decade of being integral like I've noticed myself noticing more of the inner experience of what it feels like so um, I, I, I just think they, they both just sound really juicy 
like the intellectual part of it, the kind of the diversity part of it, what integral feels like, what it thinks like. Um, and it's kind of nice just to have even like six perspectives that are all going to be like really different. It just feels, just feels yeah. really alive. I'd like to say that uh, my teacher, uh, the person, you know, my life is, has, um, I've cre there's been a lot of trauma in my life, which has helped me, uh, or I have chosen to go for growth and, and learning and, and how can I take this suffering, learn from it, and share what I learn in my healing practice. And I've been very lucky um, that I, my teacher is a woman who is very felt kind of sense kind of person and very spiritual and not a, a woman of words. She's a woman of, of um, energy, a woman of intuition. And so my, my, you guys are my new teachers to help me speak more in integral terms. And, um, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. So again, the felt sense, I think is she's not my guru. I'm not really comfortable with the word guru, but for the last 20 odd years, my teacher guru has been this amazing woman who uh, really doesn't even need to speak to teach. And um, there's a strong connection between the two of us that I, I can pick up from her without needing to discuss Ken Wilber. <laughs> In fact, I'm teaching her about Ken Wilber <laughs> and trying to figure out a way, trying to figure out how to, I'm going to plug in one of our videos and let her just sit down and watch it because you guys are really good at explaining it. Uh, but I think that that raises a very interesting question. Like, do you need to understand the concepts of integral to be at integral? No. I, I, I also absolutely believe that that's not necessary, but then defining indicators for it is so much harder. Yes. Yeah. We all have this unconscious indicator that ah, I know integral, therefore I am integral, which is also most probably not true. Mm. So I think that the, the question that raised Ryan is like, really, what is the indicator that a person is at yes. integral uh, level? I can, I can share my personal feeling mm. of that. I think that the one key indicator is that that person tends to be able to talk to anybody. Mm. Mm -hmm. whoever you meet you're able to relate to them and if you're able to relate to them there is something in your mind that is basically allowing you to have that gap of like looking at someone not knowing them but still kind of having a sense that they make sense and that you can have a conversation with them and I think that mm. integral really gives good structures uh, for some people who need cognitive structures to do that and I think that high like very intellectual people need reasons to like need reasons to be nice to people like i need i need a reason to talk to this guy and, and not think that he's crazy because i understand this this this, and that right and this is the intellectual integral but you don't necessarily need to have that intellectual structure it definitely helps and supports but and i think that links to another thing which is kind of cheesy lame and new agey but I would say that any degree of unconditional acceptance towards people is a rough indication that you're integral. Because if you meet yourself, if the, if the global population is a, is a kind of representation of the distribution of levels and things, and you tend to like them all, it is likely that you've transcended and included them all, or you're about to, or you're able to. So to me, being able to talk to anybody in all quadrants, in, in all levels, and in all, and having these acceptance is, I think that there is a secondary thing though, that is the only thing you can only get with a more intellectual approach, which is the, the possibility to talk to people of all quadrants. The, the, while the idea of being able to talk to anybody and liking them is <clears throat> roughly human, <clears throat> The possibility to understand that you're a scientist and you're talking in math, but I'm a psychologist, I'm talking this way, and mm. I find ways to work with that. No, that requires having read someone that kind of really helped bridge that, that knowledge. Uh, and obviously the openness to do that is the integral element of the internal element of integral, but the intellectual element of that, I think that's the one that, that is more intellectual and is more modern. That's why I think that Integral theory is basically Taoism without quadrants. 
like Taoism is exactly the same as integral theory in all this level structures so and so forth, but it, it doesn't have the nuances to be able to say that a mathematician and a sociologist are saying the same thing just because those sciences were not there. So this is my definition of integral. I like so, that. I, That's helpful. Yeah. I would jump in here because there is one thing which I not completely agree. I mainly agree, but you say unconditional and like people, everyone. I, I don't think that you need to like people when you are integral, everybody, but you can understand. You, you don't need to, to, to hate them or to dismiss them because you know where they are at. And so you can see all that. And uh, you, you still, what you say, you still can talk to them, but you don't necessarily need to like them. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. I think that, that touches for me something about what I, a beef that I have with Integral. Um, it's funny because I was agreeing with you there, Damiano, and then Heidi, when you were coming in, I'm like, oh yeah, it's just a really good point. That's actually one of the things that I think about, which is like, sometimes I get this impression that there's kind of, you know, there's this big glorious map. I often talk about spirals and dynamics. It's kind of let red be red, let blue be blue, et cetera. And there's this kind of appreciation, which I think is healthy. But then there's kind of like, what about the other side of it? Like, why do I have to like a blue person who's pathological and is kind of running out uh, blue ridiculousness? And um, I'd also do it to add on, I, like, I often feel like integral people, are, they're kind of um, almost like just sponges. Like you say, you can talk to anybody and appreciate some kind of truth. Um, but I think what comes with that as well is this kind of rigorous ability to be able to think and feel in, in some kind of like systematic way. Like this thing fits here, this opinion fits here in this kind of like great grand web. Um, I was actually looking because I remember a forum post and I think vision logic is a term that's used that comes out in integral and it's basically that. It's like this increasing complexity to be able to see systems upon systems which is a very kind of intellectual way of putting it that. But I think that works just as well for the felt experience. Um, dealing with emotions, dealing with people is like, oh, okay, I'm talking to somebody. How do they fit in with the rest of the world? Or how do I uh, give them an accurate label or place? Paul, what was that concept you just said? Uh, vision, vision logic, was that the one? Yes, thank you. Yeah, for me, the visual uh, logic um, makes sense because uh, in my brain, I'm shifting, um, like going, uh, looking through different cameras when I've talked to someone, <clears throat> excuse me, just at a different stage in the development, you know, someone like say traditional, uh, uh, someone who supports Trump um, um, and that kind of thing that I have to kind of like shift and be like coming to their world and remember what it was like when I was there. So that's where the transcendence and, um, and bring forth uh, the different perspectives as I've evolved myself. The other thing too, um, I, I hadn't gotten into the intellectual uh, uh, hearing that as much as I think more of the um, language translation of um, Wilbur's works for me is psychoactive that it does something to the brain, the way he's uh, used words uh, as a uh, uh, way of processing or activating. And so <clears throat> when I hear someone intellectually talk about um, Intego, because I have a friend that's really hipped on it, um, but a, he's still at a very absolutist position of rationality and a high achievement you know, and, and that kind of, um, that rep representing that modern era. Uh, or even with Obama, I don't see him as a integral level because I don't see the um, multi-perspective shifts that he, he makes with people, uh, or feels to, as the way I uh, hear him anyway. But again, um, like to say, the, the two things is to be able to shift perspective uh, with a person or wherever they are at. And then the other is that, my um, awakening process is really, um, I just kind of like, I just keep reading or just keep listening or, or coming into a group like this so that my brain keeps activating more and expanding and the neurological, you know, 
things start to uh, ignite more so that I just, for some reason, just seem to more and more be able to wrap my head around more complexity the more I get exposed to this process. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> I also want to add, um, when you feel more like integral, you don't need to be, to be insisting that you are right anymore. Right. You can uh, listen to others, even if you don't agree, but you don't need necessarily fight about that you are right, you know? So right. just let it be. And this multi-perspective thing that you can also yourself see things from different perspectives and they might even be contradictory, but be able to, to let them there at the same time without needing anymore to decide which one is the right one, you know? Yeah, it seems to me there comes a lot more nuance than like right or wrong. It's sort of like, it's almost who has the most kind of complete and inclusive and accurate map, but that's kind of so, uh, I don't know, broad and intuitive. And, it, and it, even then it's almost like you can have a, maybe you have a more complete map, but then again, the other person, they have something that needs to be included as well. I find there's a kind of, in some ways, there's more uh, excitement, personally I find, in, in, in talking to people and having an intergroup perspective, because there's always something that you can take on. There's always something of value rather than getting into a lot of the first tier where it's a little bit, there's always some agenda that's going to limit uh, what's being included. Yeah, exactly. And also the experience when you are together with integral people. I mean, we now it's the third time and we already experienced that, but I have experienced several, many, many times. Also the conferences when you are with these people, it's different. There is, uh, it is a sort of relaxed way of being together and no fights and no self uh, presentation in the sense, you know, now everybody has to follow what I say, um, which I find very annoying in other groups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice that we are collecting the pieces. I really like this. Let's go on. <laughs> You know, one of, one of my questions is what role does spirituality and developmental, looking at the world through a developmental perspective, when, how does that come into play? And there's something that I've seen several times uh, in the integral community. And I, and I, I call this word into, uh, spiritual, therefore integral fallacy, where some people think that because someone is ostensibly or presumably spiritual, whatever that means, that they must be second tier or integral. Um, and, and that th sometimes kind of bugs me, but you know, people are entitled to their opinion. But one of my things my friend said was that he was quoting, uh, an integral author or something. And, and he said, all integral theories are developmental, but not all developmental theories are integral. And I'm curious on like, how, where does that start to come into play? Cause, cause I've heard different, cause uh, for example, um, <clears throat> Heidi, one of the people that you interviewed, uh, I can't, uh, Elza Malouf, she wrote the book on uh, Israel and Palestine. Um, she, in, her, in her book on Israel and Palestine, she was describing the stages. And she said that teal or turquoise, um, a lot of people think that it's spiritual, but it's not necessarily spiritual. And, I've, and other integral authors have said the definition of turquoise is that you start to become spiritual and like reality starts to have a more metaphysical like spiritual holistic sense so i i've read it, like contradictory things um and i'm just curious what people think is the relationship between spirituality or this idea of spiritual evolution and progress and being second tier i think that's a, okay. I think that's a really good point i've actually been thinking of this week of whether a degree of spiritual awareness is needed to be integral and I actually hearing you say what you just did kind of challenged me because I think maybe that's not the case like I think of um it seems like there's quite a lot of shadow work there's a lot of like really uh, integrating lots of different views and all this kind of stuff but even like having a meditative I'm, I'm not sure that you need a meditative space to be integral but even like being meditative doesn't necessarily make you uh, spiritual per se and in the topic of like having beef with integral i think the um there is some kind of maybe bias towards 
spiritual experience or uh, upper left, like the interior. And actually, if I think of like some of the worst cases of um, dysfunction within the integral world, which I think should be talked about more, like Andrew Cohen, um, there was some various stuff with with uh, in integral or like someone who's uh, the, the debate around is somebody integral and, and, and are they not? Like David Data, I've always found kind of problematic. I don't know if people know him. Like on the one hand, I see this value and there's like this commonality of like, um, there's something about the dysfunction that has to do with spirituality. And I think maybe there's that e equation of spirituality with integral, or maybe like sometimes I think um, just because somebody has a development in, in, in a specific area, like they may be like fantastic spiritually, um, be able to get into like really deep meditative states or whatever, doesn't mean that they're developed in the other states. And I think for me personally in those, in those contexts, the problem is like, especially the emotional development, emotional development versus spiritual development because uh, like Andrew Cohen is a great example of that. I think possibly very developed in very spirituality, but that all these crazy problems with abuses of power and relationships and all this kind of stuff. And I find it baffling that that's not, uh, or, or I'm not aware of that conversation being had much in the sort of official world of integral. It has been uh, in, in the time when everything broke uh, in the uh, intro coin uh, community. It was, at least we in Germany, we had some uh, <laughs> work around that. And I think also Ken has said something, not very much, but... Uh, there is a beautiful documentary about it. Ah, okay, good. Uh, uh, where they interview him, telling the story of how he managed to make all that happen. Oh yeah, it, it is a six amazing. part interview. Yeah, a four yeah, part yeah, interview. Yeah, yeah. I saw how, that. How I created a cult or something like that is yeah, really that's... amazing. Yeah. But I can argue, I can argue in a sense against uh, Paul, just for the sake. Only in an integral setting, a guy could make a sect and then be like, okay, let's make a documentary about it and see how, how I could fuck it up so hard. Like that's <laughs> the, I mean that, if we want to see it positively, this could only happen in an integral setting where there is that level of compassion, where we can even have compassion for the sickest guru. But uh, um, to make your point, Paul, on the other hand, is there a different nature to the gurus, to the enlightened people that will come out in integral? Are they really necessarily going to be better? And are we prepared to deal with them? And I'll make a small example. The, the, the way gurus work in India is completely different. You, you wake up to the universe and then you're <clears throat> immediately pampered for the rest of your life. And like everybody loves you. And, and it's super easy to be perfect in that state. You can still screw it up big time, but it's very easy to not make too much damage when you're just sitting and talking. Now, the problem with integral is these are highly intelligent people who are gonna be wealthy who are gonna start building companies, who are gonna have a, a, a responsibility to what they do that is probably even larger than what came before. And so the, the, I think it's, it's a really important question of that, of the, because we also assume that if you become enlightened and you're developed, you're, you're gonna be, you're not gonna make any damage in the world. Mm -hmm. But that, that's absolutely not, not the case. So I think that there is a, there is a giant shadow to integral, there has to be a shadow to integral that we're not seeing yet. But if we start looking for it, we can be the, you know, we can prevent it from happening because everything has a shadow ultimately. Yeah. And as you were talking about the enlightenment and the, I don't know who, if everybody knows about the Weber, can Weber Combs matrix. So that uh, when you are enlightened from the spiritual uh, uh, point of view that you can do all the stages and go into it, then normally it was enlightened. But today you need also to have the highest level of um, of development in the on the spiral dynamics uh, side to 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 be able to call yourself enlightened. That's what Wilbur and Combs say, and I think uh, there is something to it because uh, how else can enlightened people do all this? shit no then you are not enlightened <laughs> and coming back to the upper left quadrant what i always uh, am let's say criticizing on integral or integral people is that 
it's mainly spirituality, but uh, not so much psychology and uh, even less um, deep shadow work. Three to one process, huh, everything is done. Uh, I don't think that's enough, you know, you really have to go much deeper. And I don't see very much uh, readiness to do so. Yeah, yeah could I? Because I, I, I wanted to ask you one thing and then you just, uh, Heidi, if you can expand afterwards on the mm -hmm. shadow work element, mm -hmm. because I, I'm curious about it. Sorry, mm -hmm. Paul. That's fine. Go ahead, I, Paul. I, I thought integral uh, is one and the same. I thought the integral is the, um, is, uh, as I understand, that it, it is the uh, growth in your spiritual and the growth in your stages, your psychological stages of development. So how I experience my spiritual is gonna be where I am in my stage in development. So if I'm, uh, if I'm uh, I mean, I could be expanded spiritually, I agree with you on that, you know, uh, but what I'm saying is that if I'm coming from a, uh, a traditional fundamentalist perspective, with homophobia and uh, misogynist views and all that, even though I can be very evolved as a guru or whatever, that, that's a very, for me, a low integrated level of uh, what, it mean, what it means to be integral. Uh, so to me, they both correlate together as one and the same. Um, it's not binary, you know, it's not spiritual over here and psychologically over here, but they're both, for me at least, I see as waking both together and evolving, you know what I mean? And, and, and that I think decreases the, um, or hopefully would decrease the uh, chance of, uh, like Cohen went through, you know, which I think, you know, he's at a, a stuck stage in development, but spiritual evolution was very amazing, I think, because I followed him for quite a while um, and that, but the thing is it was not integral. It was not an integrated system as Wilbur, I think is talking about. And to me, those two threads are, are to, to me, profound as a breakthrough in human development that he's, he's offering up, you know, an awakening um, of, of the shift that we as human beings can make where we start to be able to connect with each other more, no matter what level people are at, you know, and, 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 and from a spiritual perspective. That's the way I, right now, seeing it. Um, I just wonder how you guys feel. Could I, because Heidi, you said about this thing about not doing deep shadow work. I can feel myself activate every time Andrew Cohen's mentioned, because, and I think it'd be interesting to have a debate, but like having followed it somewhat, like I'm not remotely satisfied with the so-called transformation of Andrew Cohen. Like I think to me, it kind of smacks of not really doing this deep work kind of, uh, I remember listening to him talk, I mean, he was, he was going on about this kind of, it was very kind of uh, integral shadowy way of talking where it's kind of like, oh, it wasn't enough uh, agape versus eros rather than like integral worlds followed it pretty well. You, like there's just this massive list of abuse, just ridiculous that like is very different and a fair experience of being like grounded and going through that than calling it eros and agape. And I think there's something about that that feels symbolic to me of, the lack of depth for uh, psychology or um, I think dealing with trauma. And I'm not exactly sure what it is, but Heidi, you just mentioning the kind of the opinion that shadow work is a bit kind of like light and fluffy in the way that it comes across. I'm interested in because that's my, my hunch is that there's not enough, even though I, I don't know that I could necessarily articulate what I think the integral lacks other than just this gut feeling of like, some stuff just doesn't make sense. Um, yeah. First, I want to say to Andrew Cohen, in my opinion, it's just human not to be uh, humble. So this is apart from spirituality and you can seem humble in when you are sitting on the cushion, but when you come back into the world, really learning to be humble as a person and not be power driven I think it's, it's a question of whoever you are in the spiral, you know, everybody uh, is sort of prone to abuse the power as soon as they have it. I don't think that's necessarily uh, depending on the, on the spiral. That's my idea. And uh, what you say, both of you who are interested in what I mean with the shadow work, 
When I began with the feminine power courses, I was devastated to understand how little I know about the underlying patterns out of which I or we uh, act and think and do. And it is like really like the fish doesn't know that it's water where it swims on. And it really took me like, oh, you know, and took quite a time to, to, to really come over that. And when I saw it, then I wanted to, to give it to my integral friends, you know. Two or three people did coaching with me and then they said, ah, oh, yeah, that's, uh, hmm. but most people are not interested. They think they already know and they already can, but to see the water in which you swim is not easy because it's so near to you that you really don't even notice it. And yeah, that's what I mean. For me, this is a, a deeper shadow work than just, you know, uh, look a little bit into what your childhood has been. That has to do maybe also with childhood, but it's, it, it's different. It is how you are guided every moment. Hi, Karen. Every moment by your, uh, by your conditionings, which you don't really realize. <laughs> I, I would like to expand on this, Heidi, because I think that this is a, it's a core type of psychological work that is actually not found in most traditions, in the sense that in psychotherapy, you have this relentless going back to events, to things, to, to dynamics. And you, you, you don't have the sense that you just had entire periods of your life where a certain patterns of emotions and values was just being communicated to you. And that forms a shadow just as any trauma, as any parent, as anything else. And I think that really very little is talked in practice in uh, integral theory about how to deal with that. If you have a social conditioning, which is basically a part of yourself that you're not allowed to be because that's what's being said in society, it does not provide, I think, adequate tools to, to do it. I think that, for example, the three to one, if the three to one exercise is the only thing that integral theory can provide to do shadow work, there is a problem because it doesn't work that well. It's, it's cumbersome, it's hard, you need to write things down. Like I can't explain it to, to, to many people and I myself have a hard time doing it. And I think that there is, that is one major weakness. But the other major weakness I think of the integral theory is that it's not intercultural. Like there's really just, a, there's too many Americans and, uh, and unfortunately, this is to, to, to me, I see it a lot. Is, is in Europe, I think we have a bit of a different perspective on how everything is just more naturally multicultural. And I think that, that creates a, a shadow. And I, I would agree that this, this is a, a big element of what is a little bit missing in, I think many people just got enough and then they were like, okay, I have enough, now I can just grow and just take off. Uh, and that's easy to do when you're writing books. It's a bit harder to do when you're in the world doing things. So I think we also miss a bit of a, like you said, Paul, like about entrepreneurship. I'm an entrepreneur. Like to be an integral entrepreneur, I think is just a different thing than to be an integral writer. And we don't have enough of that conversation happening yet because it's just early on, but that would help put things in practice and see if we do have a shadow or not because you're confronted by the world and you see how you act. Was it, um, let was me, it, uh, excuse me, let me <clears throat> welcome Karen and uh, I want just to tell her what we are about. We were talking a little bit about this uh, thread which came up in, um, in, the, in the forum. What is your biggest uh, disagreement or something with integral theory? And so we are now discussing that a little bit. Okay, Paul, go ahead. Um, yeah, I was going to ask Damiano if there was I think it was him posting it in the forum about this. And it's funny, is it, wait a minute, lower right, the system's part of integral theory. Somebody was talking about this. So yeah, I think it was you talking about this, this way of uh, connecting people together through an online platform that people could yeah. volunteer to do projects and all this kind of stuff. Because yeah. I thought that was just, uh, uh, I mean, awesome in itself, but I think there seems to be this huge hunger in integral the world to change the world. Um, but like, there's a lack of connectivity, there's a lack of people coming together. And I think that naturally results in kind of navel gazing and being more interested in the interior perspective because you can do that on your own. I suppose if you try to make culture, 
like Heidi, you've often talked about the fact that, you know, there's not, there's not really a, an integral voice in the mainstream. For some reason, somebody hasn't been able to crack through. Um, and to some extent, like business and all this kind of stuff, like to, to actually be able to change the world needs people to come together more. Like in some ways, it's kind of amazing that, I, I, I guess the forum isn't that old, but like the Zoom calls weren't set up earlier to be like, don't people want to talk to each other or like see how fruitful it is. I just see this kind of lack in the integral world for some reason. Maybe it's like there's, it's harder because there's less of us. Uh, maybe there's some bias, I don't know, but it's really great to see when people do come together. Yeah, well, really quickly. And that always brings me back to the same thing. That's why we need to run for president. That's why we need to form the integral political party and organize people in this capacity. Sure I am. <laughs> but um you know I, I really i really really appreciate this conversation that we're having and especially paul all of the issues that you've brought up like i think we think very very similarly everything from the upper left quadrant bias and the amounting and kind of a navel gazing at the expense of lower right or, or practical initiatives that involve people coming together but the other thing i would i would like to mention too and and when you this really st struck me when you mentioned the arrows and agape thing was I'd like to see more development in ethics and in philosophy, ethics is probably my favorite branch of philosophy and, and everything from like Aristotelian virtue ethics or even ethical systems in like Buddhism or Hinduism or Taoism or something, Christian ethics or modern ethics like utilitarianism or Kantian deontology, deontological natural rights. And I feel like Ken kind of skimped out on ethical development through history. I mean, I would have loved to see like, oh, pre-modern ethics is mostly about virtue and the golden mean and the middle way. And modern ethics is like deontology and utilitarianism and you know, green ethics is you know, ethics of power and that kind of thing. Um, and I, I, I'm just curious, like, what is the role of, because I think ethical development and character development and virtue ethics, these things are not really sexy to a lot of people. Shadow work and psychology is a lot juicier, a lot more interesting, and certainly part and parcel of modernity and onward. But I do have a certain love growing up in a Buddhist temple in a very traditionalist environment. One of the things that struck me was everyone in the environment that I grew up in was a person of deeply, like a lot of them were probably, some of them were even purple, you know but they were all deeply good people of impeccable ethical character and the most sincere people. And this is the word that I think about a lot is all these people there, I really deeply respected. And I think about the word respect, like who do I really respect as an individual? Uh, who is someone who, have, who I think of as possessing the highest character? And uh, like people like Andrew Cohen, like I don't know a lot about him, but he's not someone like I look at him and like I feel this overwhelming sense of respect, you know? And I'm, and I'm just like, where does that come into play? Because it, it, shadow work, I think, is, of course, as we all know how important and crucial it is, a lot of it is very much like working with like the unconscious, right? Working with things that you're not aware of or, or things that have kind of like the other side of your ego self and that you're trying to integrate and, and shine a light on. But and a lot of ethics is a lot of like conscious mind. Like, what am I consciously trying to do, right? And I think too much morality definitely creates a shadow. Like we see in Amber or Fox News, people having sex scandals, that kind of thing. But I just, I'm just curious, like, where, and I feel like if someone like Andrew Cohen or had had that embodied that ethical perspective, you wouldn't whitewash your mistakes by saying, oh, it was too much Eros Nagapa or some super out there metaphysical thing. You could say, look, I messed up. You know, what I did in some ways was deeply immoral and unethical. And that gut, like owning your ethical mistakes, I just feel like I would like to see more emphasis on ethics and morality in discussions in general, integral discussions. If I can comment, because I, I, I'm really interested in this is, in a sense, what you're saying, it lacks social responsibility. Like it, it lacks, because that, the kind of ethic you talked about is an ethic that, it, that includes a larger sense of self, not just that event, but what are the models that as a society we need to have and respect. And I think that the, 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 one of the biggest paradoxes about the integral theory is that all its solutions are not integral. Like all its solutions for changing the world are mapped very well in the quadrants, but ultimately if there's gonna be a way that improves the world, it has to be something that literally puts all those things together. You cannot really separate them. And for example, one of the absurd things of the state of integral today is that 
it is very good at describing all the previous models of society, but it hasn't yet predicted a new one. It hasn't yet said, guys, if we follow the math of the logic of integral theory, the next step looks like this. And if it was able to do that, we would all be building that world because it would make sense. And I think this is a lot in part to the fact that, okay, we understood all these like structures and levels and things. How do we engineer a society that makes those things inevitable? And, and that, that's really the, the new, I think, way if you wanna save the world and help everybody enlighten, you should not anymore looking at explaining people how you do the Dharma, but how you bring that into formal education and how do you structure new economics that have better incentives and so on and so forth. And I think that this really completely holistic vision is lacking. And Ryan, if you need to run for president, you're gonna have to be able to present it. So, <laughs> but I think that's the kind of campaign, if someone was to go into politics, it would have to go designing and drawing a new model of society, not just of self, of integrated individual. And also a down to earth model, not only somewhere up in the sky, you know, very practical. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I went to the What Now conference in Denver a year ago, um, Damiano, and um, that was four days of people from all the quadrants, all sorts of practical things, doing presentations about what they individually or their groups are doing, um, all the quadrants. It was thrilling. We had people who are working with, um, you know, I'm virtual reality, uh, doing a very, uh, a what they're doing in their lab with virtual reality that actually tends to bring about third tier types of consciousness as a side effect. We had a guy who, I, I, I'd have to look up the list, uh, a businessman who works in very high level with CEOs and he did a brief presentation about a whole new school of economics that is starting to be taught in um, business schools about, and actually, he was a lawyer. He had been a lawyer in a very big Silicon Valley firm, and he presented this new form of corporate law. He said, all you have to do is change four sentences in existing corporate law to create corporations that have a fourfold drive. One is to maximize profit. One is to enhance and preserve the health and happiness of the employees. The third is to enhance the well-being of the community in which you're operating, which you're serving with your, your product or service. And the fourth is the health of the environment. And all you need to do is change, I think it was three or four sentences in corporate structure to create a corporation where that is those are the four drives that drive the corporation in ways that, that because all four of these pillars build on each other and you end up with a more profitable corporation that way. Now, he only had, um, I think, about 25 minutes, each of these people, but we had people from, you know, we had a, a Muslim scholar, we had people from, and they, these were specific people doing specific things in the World Summit, very high level. So just to assure you that there are people doing these things this, we are beginning and and Ken Wilbur and the people immediately around him organized that conference specifically to showcase these people and get us talking to each other and you can probably access these talks online so I think I think what you want is starting to take shape around the the pillar of the theory it's kind of like a coral reef is starting to grow around the remains of this abandoned oil derrick uh, you know um, and it was it was thrilling it was wonderful to be there and we had an incredible New Year's Eve party to boot. It, yeah I see it happening all over the place uh, um, in the sense of um, uh, the yellow jacket movement in France uh, you know it's, it's seven different perspectives on politics from the left to the right all finding common cause and integrating you know what I mean or even the um, governing right now in Italy as an integration of five different perspectives you know but I see this coalescing of people from different perspectives, different levels of whether add or not add, starting to coalesce and build unity and, uh, and, and, and integrate. I mean, we have this young 28 year old that's uh, speaking more from an integral perspective that she's open and uses language that in, incorporates everyone from whatever perspective they're from. And I think the, that that's the way the shift happens is that it just happens rather than we just come out with some kind of um, 
or I need to come out with some kind of uh, just explaining integral to uh, move people that way. You know what I mean? I, the other thing too, uh, I feel with the um, shadow work is, because um, um, I, I have a lot of recovery under my belt. I had to, because I went to, you know, come from so much trauma and all that. So I think I take for granted that um, the two, both spiritual and growth are one and the same in the sense that if I, for example, I was having a hard time with a friend from a traditional perspective. Well, my trauma is mainly from traditional people, uh, you know, being an orphanage uh, uh, with um, fundamentalist uh, Catholic uh, priests and uh, nuns and all that. And so I could see that that would trigger me, you know what I mean? So I needed to do some work there to get back to my level of being, being able to transcend with that people that were triggering me uh, from a fundamentalist perspective was coming from, uh, so that I could go back into their world and appreciate their values at that level and not have my shadow work getting in the way. But I thought that was, to me, was growing into integral wise, you know, ex, you know uh, awakening more and, and I'm moving forward in my understanding of what it means to be more fully integral. That's, that's, that's the way I was, I wrap my head around it. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. And what I wonder if you know the book from Frederic Laloux, uh, Reinventing Organizations. No. Where he has studied, uh, I think, 12 organizations. Uh, who, who out of nothing, without even knowing integral, have uh, um, found a way which is different. Uh, two of them, I think they have, uh, they have given up. But now I heard in Putzwick or something in, in, in Holland, there is um, nurses uh, have taken on um, a completely self-organized way of, 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 of doing the, I think 80% now of the whole country is following in this system where there is no boss. I mean, there is somebody who has founded it, but he is not working as a boss. And the, the units of, of nurses uh, reorganize themselves. And so it comes out that they have much more time for their clients and everybody is happy and and the, the just arose, as far as I know, without knowing Ken Wilber. But, you know, and there are several of, the, of them. And the book is already six or seven years old. So who knows how many are uh, on now. In the Integral uh, European Conference, there is twice has been a whole track of tier um, uh, uh, enterprises. So they, they, they meet a whole lot of people and talk about their experience and they're really building stuff so i was going to say with this because i think uh, what occurs from actually like each person share like ryan when you were talking about ethics like i i was sat there thinking i could happily probably just sit there and listen to you like talk about ethics like it genuinely seemed like a blind spot and like i'm thinking like man i can remember ken saying something about this like about the stage of development and people saying that people are out there like um, there are there are loads of people out there, and I actually I think there is I, I posted a thing on Integral Live, which was um, it was something like a big list of Integral voices that I know of, which I partly did just for a purely selfish basis of like I want to know if anybody knows the people out there because there does seem to be a lot of people out there, but it's like it's almost like we need a central database or some kind of like cultural um, thing to be able to group everybody everybody around like some of the people I listed uh, some I know really well some I don't like you know Sean Phillips so he's kind of a physical trainer so there's all that kind of physical fitness and all this kind of stuff like uh, Robert Augustus Masters a therapist that I think it's like really fantastic like um, Heidi I know you know Elizabeth Diebold so I'm not exactly sure he'd class like some of that's evolutionary but I know she's got a big specialization in gender and there are so many people doing things in their own sphere and it would just be fantastic to have like a more a uh, solid grasp or a way to be able to uh, connect with people. I don't know if that's a, like Damiano, I'm thinking about your thing that you were talking about the website. I don't know if that's yeah. a lower right thing, if that's a lower left well, cultural thing or both. Or Well, that's that's kind of what I'm trying to work on in the sense that my, my company is a collaboration platform for communities. And one of the things that I've been thinking about is to just give it 
to all the integral communities and start to make them collaborate and kind of work together and map each other and also scout all those organizations that don't call themselves integral but ultimately are because there isn't really like a single place where we can all collaborate mm -hmm. and, uh, and so lately i've been really coming to the idea that even the future of my company may be that maybe even more oriented towards that and not just servicing the public because i think that that that's a little bit what we're lacking so i, I definitely come from that perspective because i am trying to create the integral facebook this is basically what my company is, uh, I, but I'm barely starting to, and the, the paradox is that I've known integral theory for 10 years. I've been working on my company for almost near as much, but only lately I really began to see how to put the two things together. And how can I, how can I completely integrate what I'm doing with that? And I, I don't really know yet, but it's an intuition. So Paul, if you ever want to help me out with a Facebook, yeah. uh, into a Facebook, <laughs> let's talk about it. <laughs> It's funny, I'm thinking of, there, there was a, something I found when I was looking at vision logic, there was this, uh, because they were doing examples of integral thinking of, sort of like, oh, I don't really know what this person's talking about, but I know enough in my own area to be able to map it. It's funny, because I think exactly when I was reading your post, I was like, there's all this lower right stuff. I have barely any idea what Damiano is on about, but I get enough from the specializations that I have. It, it, it's like, sounded fantastic. And there was part of me of just like, man, I'd love to just talk to him just because I can feel the connectivity and there's a certain uh, evolutionary, it, like it feels new and powerful, even though I don't fully get it. Um, and it, it makes me wonder if there's, a, there's some heightened ability to be able to collaborate that comes out in integral. Like even if you're really specialized in one quadrant, the fact that you can actually talk to someone, you know, like being uh, meditating and being like fantastic at states is very different than being in business. And yet somehow it seems like integral people can converge with that. Uh, just, just quickly to give a couple plugs. Um, everyone should go to Heidi's website, the wisdom factory and Heidi has interviewed all kinds of people in different subjects. Uh, I was really impressed with the range of people that she interviewed on and doing all kinds of really cool things in the world. And also the website called enlivening edge is basically like an integral magazine. And they have all these publications of it's based. It was, I think it was inspired off of uh, reinventing organizations by Lalu, but it's basically like a magazine and they have all these little articles and of cool things people are doing really, really robust in every, in every single field except politics. Uh, so yeah, enlivening edge and, and Heidi's thing, but, but just going back for a second, um, a question I have for Damiano and Damiano, I forgot what was the initial thing you said that triggered or, you know, brought up everyone sharing all the things, are, people are doing in the world with integral but um you you had said something like uh that people um or or that we haven't really envisioned society or i don't know the exact words used but yeah. so i guess my question is i'm sure you're aware very aware of all these things that are happening do you feel in some ways what well, what exactly were you getting at do you feel like these initiatives are inadequate or they don't have enough connection with each other or what I was wondering, you can just expand I on think, that. I think that the, the point that I was trying to make, I think in a sense is we're getting a lot of integral perspectives within each field. We're getting a lot of, but we're not getting the other way around. I think as much macro systems, inventing macro systems of economics, of structure of society that inherently make all those things happen because we, we have this, like one of the things that Marx says is that the, the culture is actually shaped by the economical structure, which is actually very plausible that an objective sort of very causal structure could then propagate something more fluid such as culture. So I'm not, I'm not saying that that's necessarily the case. The two are, are interdependent. But when, if, if we keep trying to describe the world as infinite integral perspectives, it's still really hard to get a very concrete, cohesive picture. And I think that if we understand underlying, if we focus more on talking about underlying processes that are always the same across quadrants, that's where you get something quite interesting because then you say, okay, if this is a valid concept, then that's the concept around which I will build my entire society with a very few set of rules, which is what you were saying, um, Karen Bortis. In a sense, you said, I took note of that because you said, this guy came 
took the entire law and said, look, if we, if we inspire these four characters, it all sort of inevitably becomes integral. And I think that that's, that can be done at an even higher and higher and higher structure of level. And I, I think that there are some foundational principles that are so common across all the evolution. And, and I think that a lot of the conversation in integral is not as much about that. Like all the concept of the whole ons and evolution unfolding like this, we've used it to get this far, but you get, it's actually a perfect tool to make predictions. It's a perfect tool to think, ah, the, the, the next level of the economical system has to kind of follow this tangent. And I think that there's a lot of prediction work that can be done and it's, it's just a, an area in which I am particularly very excited which is finding very simple formulas to explain everything rather so, than so what, any perspectives. So what I'm hearing is what they kind of call between piecemeal change versus systemic change. Is that, what, is that kind of what you're, you're I, I think that's a very good summary of it. Exactly. Okay. I think the, cool. the, the current philosophy is you should all become integral and society will be integral, but that's not what integral teaches us. What integral teaches us is that it's a process that happens at all levels. Um, but let's not just let it happen as a bunch of people on their own doing it. Let's, let's try and begin to find some orchestration, some, some it, it, it's, it's hard to say order because it sounds constrictive. So it would have to be some different weird kind of order. You know, you look at blockchain and you look at all these decentralized system of governance. I mean, they're, they're inherently integral at, at nature. But, but uh, I think that there is, we can find better common threads to use fewer words to describe the society that is coming. Mm. Thank you. I wanted to come in here just to, uh, as Ryan uh, said in our website, there's a lot to find. I did the, we did the interviews with uh, Said Dalabani, who has written a book about uh, new economics, and he is a very much in spiral dynamics and a close collaborator with Don Beck, and so you might have a look into what he is um, saying. It is quite a, three years ago, so it's not brand new, but might be interesting. I'm thinking I, I, now of, hmm? sorry, Heidi, go ahead. No, I wanted to say, I don't remember now in, in the moment if he did answer the question of, of uh, uh, Damiano. It makes me, uh, uh, irritates me, Dimicola Munak. <laughs> it, was a, it was the computer of an intern that had a really freaky name, so it just... Yeah, I, could, I could rename you if you want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> Go ahead, Karin. Yes, uh, Damiano, what you're saying reminds me of uh, um, back in the 80s when people were first discovering the theory of, of chaos theory and self-organizing systems, autopoiesis. And what you're saying, I love what you're saying, and I'm thinking this isn't something that we will invent. These foundational principles, and I want to just, just quickly, do you mean all quadrants and all levels, or all quadrants just, or just all levels? Mm -hmm. Just oh, like, oh. Also, like, but I mean, I'm talking about integral physics. Like, we need to account for a type of physics that in, inherently produces the integral system. Okay, like, so like, it, at a physics level, it has to work just as well. And you don't see a lot of physicists who are trying to find the law of the universe by looking at integral theory. And I think that's where they should be looking at, because it's the best thinking... indication of how the universe is evolving. If you reverse it, you actually get really foundational truths about the universe. So that's the extreme to which I, I, I think it could be brought. <laughs> like really extreme, of course. But I think you could solve the foundational question of physics if you use integral theory integrally. Sure. Well, I'm, I'm trying to approach this as a historian, the big history. What are some of the foundational things we find across all the levels, starting with the Big Bang? And I'm doing this more from an artistic aesthetic point of historic point of view than physics, although I love physics. Um, I don't know very much about it, but I'm thinking that these kinds of principles, and I also wrote down what you said, find better common threads that use fewer words at Occam's razor, you know, the simpler explanatory principles are more likely, you know, you know, you, uh, explanatory principles are not to be multiplied beyond necessity. Um, but, you know, Occam's razor, and, and like Newton's law, one of my models is Newton's laws of motion. They'd had, uh, there'd been, you know, centuries, millennia 
of meticulous observation of the movements of stars and planets and so on. And, and there had been an advance where, well, if we use a, a heliocentric version of the universe, you know, a Copernican version, rather than the Ptolemaic, where, you know, uh, it, it, it works much better if we think of the Earth as a planet revolving around the sun, but it still doesn't account for all this carefully observed data. But then along comes Newton with like, I think, three simple laws of motion, force equals mass times acceleration. That's very few words. And suddenly you've got these three simple mathematical formula correlate vast amounts of data. Aha. Uh -huh. I mean, these, I think, uh, th this is this is what comes up to me when I listen to you, Damiano, and I think we can apply this in all levels of fields, and this is what Integral is searching for, and I think this will co-arise, we will discover them, but when we have groups of us, we, we are self-organizing, like this, our little nexus here, we're like a small nerve nexus, uh, we're like a, 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 a group of synapses in a brain to me, I mean, we collectively through self-organizing groups like this little one. Thank you, Heidi. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Um, we, if we are on the search for these and discover them, we will co-discover them. I mean, they will emerge into our consciousness. They will have been there all along, right? Like Newton's laws of motion. He didn't create them. He discovered them. At a certain stage, the collective was ready for that understand level of understanding to arise so i think we are all on the search of these foundational principles and i think we will co-discover them as we continue to self-organize in these little groups of synapses like we have here and let's all be on the watch for them over and out It's amazing to me, like how how quickly I think this cause is like particularly symbolic of it, of like how quickly people's skills come to the surface, like where you can see, like we're all kind of talking the same language, but every ha everybody has a specific interest. And Karen, when you're talking about um, like distilling things down to to be really simple, like I'm thinking of trans transcend and include, like they're kind of in the spirit of that, but. I'm kind of thinking of the maps that have already been, been made and kind of celebrating that as well. Like, you know, aqua, just that, like all quadrants, all lines just covers so much in such a, in such a simple way. Um, and you can, you can see how, how powerful it is as well. Yes, it is. It is very powerful. Aqua, it's, it's, I love it. It's simple on the surface, like the theory of karma, but then as you explore it, it gets endlessly more complicated, like Newton's three laws of motion, three very simple mathematical formula, and it explains and correlates such a vast amount of, of material reality. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, for instance, I gave a talk on that Denver uh, What Now conference to my church group, the Unitarian Universalists in Berkeley. And I said, as an example, Ken Wilber's body of theory solves the mind-body dilemma. Ryan, you love philosophy. You know, the mind-body dilemma that's vexed philosophers for m probably millennia, certainly many centuries. Uh, it solves it. Conscious, pure consciousness, matter and energy, co-arise. They co-arise. One, one does not produce the other. They are not reducible to each other. They co-arise like the north and south poles of a magnet. They coexist. They create a whole manifestation between them. I mean, from these, the, the aqual to me is one of those powerful explanatory foundational principles from which we can derive a lot of complexity that we are now trying to help take out into the larger circle. So uh, maybe, maybe the metaphor, I work in metaphors and stories. I'm a writer. So currently, so I'm thinking maybe the, the integral theory is like that little seed of grain that irritates the oyster so much it produces a pearl eventually it, it has it, 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 or or just a few molecules of water that come together in, in in a cloud and under the right conditions and form a beautiful snowflake so uh, yes but by all the means let's keep on looking for these foundational principles across all quadrants and this is the reason i'm going to as a historian these levels 
the, these developmental levels that Ken Wilber identified, he, took, he put Piaget together with the history of civilization basically, and showed how each level up we go through the colors, through spiral dynamics. And this is the brilliance of spiral dynamics. Each level up in cognitive development is so much more powerful a way of dealing with the world individually and communally than the one below, that it only takes 10% of a population to be at that level to make that be the, 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 um, <clears throat> how that society operates. Each level we go up in, in, in cognitive development is so much more powerful a way of dealing with reality, even if it's not the whole truth. By definition, it's not the whole truth. There's always a, another place to transcend to. But suddenly, where you've got um, Newton and then you've got, uh, um, <laughs> what they, um, not trigonometry, I'm thinking a calculus kind of came in at the same time. They were working at that level. And now we've got all this engineering. I mean, each, this is what, this is what to me, um, um, integral promises to do with Ken Wilber and spiral dynamics is that we will watch. I mean, we're kind of like the seed grains in the pearl. I'm working with metaphors, which is how I work. We individually and collect, we're like these, or, or like these few molecules in an ice cloud that, around which new structures will form. And so, yes, so thank you, Damiano. I will continue to consciously look for foundational principles across all, across all quadrants and levels <laughs> that find better common threads using fewer words. I, I will memorize that. <laughs> <laughs> and you should report us weekly on the new ones you find. <laughs> yes, I apologize for being better late. Not to be too many. <laughs> Fewer words, right? That's, that's always my challenge. And I'll just say, I apologize for being late this morning after you moved it to seven o'clock in the morning Pacific time to accommodate me. I fell asleep meditating and didn't hear my alarm. So my apologies. No, no problem with that. I think we can handle that. But before, I wanted to, to, to state that we had a moment of silence. And in normal groups, you have immediately jump in. You know, and I think it's also a part of integral understanding that we can allow silence to be without feeling too awkward and even appreciate it. You know, and especially when we can see each other, I think it's, it's it, it, to me, it, it reminded me how uh, normally when there is silence, especially if you are the moderator, then you have immediately, blah, 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 blah. but no, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> Thank you for the experience. I was, uh, how do I put this? Um, it goes back to my thing of wondering if there's a certain meditative space needed in integral. Like there's something like you're looking at this big picture constantly and sooner or later you see this like giant map. Like it's hard not to, at least on a mental level, to appreciate how much wholeness there is. But I think at, at times as well, like it almost enters a, an actual intuition of like a, a, a some larger sense of we space like I think that's what I was feeling during the silence was I was aware of like well there's something bigger than all of us and there's something that I'm curious about if this fits with other people like there's something I always find my nervous system gets really amped whenever I talk to integral people I remember in Latinx they were always talking about evolving I was watching yesterday when I was scouring around to find people to put on the, this integral list I was making Barbara Marks Hubbard she was talking about this kind of erotic, almost like, I think she called it erotic vocation. Like there's this thing of, like, I'm listening to everybody's amazing ideas and it's, I, I can feel myself needing to be grounded in this like meditative space just to be able to hold, uh, Karen, you said something about polishing an oyster or something like this pressure or, and, and I was like thinking, man, that, that is a perfect metaphor for how I often feel when talking to integral people is just like, there's just this kind of excitement building. It's, it's almost it's too much excitement, almost. There, there is a beautiful video from um, Jacques Fresco, I think he's called. He's the guy who made the whole um, Venus project thing. And he does this thing where he draws the face of Lincoln. And he asks people while he's drawing it to guess what it is. And the guy is able to guess it when he's just drawn like a couple signs. And 
And his conclusion is like, to know that certain things are true, you don't really need all the information. It just feels that it's obviously that truth. And this is the feeling that I get when I'm talking with integral people that we're all saying different things, but we have this hunch that there is an underlying elegance that, that unites all the things we're saying. And I think it, it is super exciting that it's kind of unfolding in, in front of our eyes. And we, we don't know what, what's coming and it's exciting. Uh, Karen, if I may, since you said that you are the feeler of the group, can we have some feeling perspective since we didn't get any of that? So well, far? It would be interesting. It would be, it would be interesting to, to feel what you feel. I'm glad you asked. I was just thinking this is all very heady and I'm trying to stay in my body and feel it. <laughs> and um, in my acupuncture practice, before I put needles in people, I hold their feet and I just get a sense of what's going on. And in my mind, I imagine that each person's feet that I hold is God or a manifestation of God. And I was just imagining holding all of your, all of your feet individually. And um, that's the way I would get more of a sense of what's going on. The headiness is great because I have lots of notes. I'll go read. I'm not auditory, I'm more visual, so I need to read, and I'm also kinesthetic. So uh, energetically, I'm holding your feet, and that's the way that I can um, participate and understand this conversation better. You are holding the space. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you are listening, and I think what I also see with integral people, they are more ready to listen, to really listen, and not, you know... Uh, check the cell phone in the meantime, unless it's a, 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 ex, a, how do you say, exception. But I think we still can do that. We can do it as a practice, a conscious practice, even more, you know, and allow even more um, spaces in between. And because what I find when you come out of a deeper field, let's say, then the words arise by themselves somehow. They are not any more theories, but they are coming from a different place. And that reminds me, I want to send you a, a link. I participated, I think on Thursday, on a call with Otto Sharma and the theory U, you. And um, what I got out of it, uh, most important, he says in the future, it's not left to right, but it's from more open and more closed. So the, the polarities will be uh, completely different. And I found that very interesting. And by the way, the Otishama process is just, I don't know if you know that, the theory U process. Mm -hmm. I will send you the, the, the link and um, then you can watch the <coughs> presentation. There is a book uh, and he has also Presencing Institute, I think it is called. And it makes very clear how real understanding happens and how separation has ha happens. Uh, understanding and new emergence of something new happens when the presencing and uh, the disconnection is absencing. That's, uh, you know, the you represents that you go into the depths and then you come out with a solution. And our normal uh, way of being in this world is, is going absencing, going the other way, you know? Mm -hmm. So really interesting if you want to. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'd be very, personally be very interested in that. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, coming out of the, let's say the we space that we create this we together and we listen and, and, and then new things can emerge. It's, it's four stages of, of depth, let's say. And normal uh, conversations happen on the upper stage. And we are, I think, going to the second, but we are not going to the third and to the fourth yet, but we could, maybe we arrive there, that's good. We will see. I send you the link and from there you can, can go. Thank you. Oh, Ronald, uh, I don't know. Do I have your email address? Can you send it to me? <laughs> Ronald? Ronald? Sorry, I, my dog was... Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yes, Ronald M. Convict. 
at gmail.com. Ronald, then? It's Ronald M. Converse is one word. Oh, write it in the chat, please. Here is, I uh, no, maybe okay. you, you can do that. Okay. I think yeah, we have it, Heidi. We, ha we have him. Do we have him? Yeah. Ah, okay, good. Yeah, um, if good. you have him, then it's okay. So you get the email too. Yeah. And uh, Karen, for Karen, uh, historian, your emails always come back when I send them to the whole group. So there must be a very strong filter. So I send it extra to you. Okay. Yes, um, if you send it from a different email address than the one I have for you, it will hit my spam filter, but you should get back a request to be asked to be let through the spam filter. No, that when I send it to all people, that just says it cannot be delivered. And I tried yeah. it three or four times and it doesn't. But, but I get it from you when you send it to me individually? When I do it individually, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what's going on. I'll look into it, thanks. Okay. So we are almost at the one and a half hour mark. And I would invite you to or do a checkout or if there is something uh, which is still really needed to be talked about today. We should also actually talk about the initiative of Ryan of um, doing a second call when that would be. I saw the, the doodle was not very populated. <laughs> so You had a few doodlers. Uh, okay. um, well, yeah, thanks for bringing it up. Um, yeah, so basically uh, one overlap, I think Karen and Paul filled out the, Karen Voorhees and Paul filled out the doodle. And I think Wednesday <laughs> looked like a good day. So, uh, I mean, I know that we're using uh, your Zoom, Heidi. And I was like, oh yeah, we don't have another Zoom account um, unless someone has one that's paid for or we all use Skype. Yeah, go ahead. If, if I'm on Wednesday, we can use mine, but I need to check if I can do it on Wednesday. And oh, okay. I have my okay. shows on Wednesday, so it will be difficult for me between seven and eight o'clock, my time. So, oh, I see. Okay. Okay. But uh, yeah, if not, we'll just, yeah, if you're interested, go to the doodle poll and we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. Thank you. So Ryan, I went to the doodle poll and uh, wasn't sure if the times listed were, which, which time zone they oh, were. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's Pacific. Okay. I, I filled it in, but the times that I filled in would not be accurate. I can go back and change it. Okay. All right. Great. Mm -hmm. And Ryan, uh, next time, remind me that I give you the co-host right at the beginning. So you can record it too, if you want to, or whoever wants okay. to be co-host. I put the recordings then in my website and then they will be all together. But whoever wants to be co-host, you can do that but I need to know it. <laughs> so do you have a formal checkout or how do you do the checkout? <laughs> because I just want to tell all of you, I really, really got a lot out of the session today and uh, I love hearing the different uh, perspectives and spins and I think at this point, my mind is just kind of like going all kind of different directions, you know, you know, kind of, uh, you know, you know, in a sense, where am I at or not at with integral uh, development and all of that. But so much of it was familiar with what had gone on in my head um, in, in my uh, training and learning. Uh, and so I found myself very validated today but also very challenged. So I want to thank you all for, for that um, uh, experience. Thank you all. And I will double check that I've really set my alarm next time I meditate before joining this group next week. <laughs> Well, I concur with Ronald. I feel validated and challenged as well. And I have a list of things that I can go read about and study and um, uh, look at and ponder and perhaps have questions for next time. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi and Ryan. Yeah, I just want to say I, I really appreciate everyone's um, 
individual expression of integral theory and how everyone has a different take on it. Everyone has, has digested it differently and everyone regurgitates it differently. So I feel like a wonderful little like baby bird whose mouth is getting stuffed with all kinds of goodies. <laughs> and, uh, and everyone's transmission of, of integral theory has really expanded my mind. In, in far more ways than I could get just from watching Ken Wilber uh, or Corey DeVos or whatever. So I love this decentralized integral approach. And uh, rock on, you guys are awesome. This is the, what I look forward to. There's a Japanese word called tanoshimi. And tanoshimi means the thing you look forward to the most. And so this call on Sunday mornings is my tanoshimi. So arigato gozaimasu. Aloha. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think more integral than a Ken Wilbur video would be a really catchy name for these Skype chats to get more people joining. But I, I, I completely agree with Ryan, like an integral thing cannot be just one guy talking. It has to be a little bit more complex than that. And I, I think this fully embodies how it's supposed to be. Uh, more of a constant dialogue than just, you know, listening to these amazing things, but we get even a lot more out of this. And I think it's fantastic and I'm really excited and can't wait to get more of it. Uh, yeah, I feel similarly, Ryan, you kind of, I don't know the words you use, it's just them. Um, but like, I was thinking that like, this is probably the, probably the most exciting call I get on. And I'm kind of thinking of like everybody's share just felt really, uh, I don't know, valuable and exciting. And it's like, people were saying things I didn't necessarily know about, but there's a part that I feel with every single one of you, like, oh, I could really collaborate with this person I'd really want to, or I could just, frankly, just sit and listen to them, uh, talk about their own perspectives or their own, uh, even just, I guess, even some of the emotional connection of just appreciating all of you for your different connections. And um, for me, I find it very validating in my own experience over the week. Um, we've only had, how many, has it been, no, two, is this our third call? Um, so not many, and I, I already find myself like being much more grounded in my sort of integral perspectives. I find being more intelligent. I also think being less uh, confused and stressed that my excitement for wanting to do things in the world or my um, higher abilities or perceptions or feelings, I'm not squashing them down because there's a, there's a space where it, not only makes sense, but just feels really uh, understood and valuable and creative. And uh, yeah, it's just really fun, like watching it just organically. Like I think Heidi, you were saying, just everybody's really good at just self-organizing and just watching it in the fly happen over just three calls. Um, yeah, it's just it's just exciting, I think. Thank you. Yeah. And for me, it's, you know, a deep desire to talk with people and what we actually talk is not so important. It is important, but it is, uh, these are the little bits here and there, but the fact that we come together and talk about it and talk with it and, and be with it, that's the most important thing. And if we agree or not agree, that's really not, <laughs> You know, and I think this is, as somebody said before, this is where integral can begin to happen, can begin to emerge. And I'm really grateful that you are here up to it. I'm, I'm excited to be able to do it and to offer it to you. And then with Ryan, we talked about in future, maybe we can attract more people and then make separate groups and make under groups or whatever. And uh, also shared leadership. It's not that I always have to do uh, the, uh, I, if, if it's my Zoom channel, I will do the introduction and the, the goodbye. But, you know, I don't have to, 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 to be the facilitator all the time. It can be uh, shared. And, and also, you know, I learned to be in front of camera. I, I tell that now power to you and other people who are a little bit more shy to come in front of a camera. That's a thing you can learn. And uh, I'm happy to have learned it. But, uh, you know, I started five years ago. So <laughs> and it uh, has also to do with uh, 
Yeah, with wanting to show up. It's one of the four things, no? Grow up, uh, clean up, show up. What was the other one? Uh, wake, wake up. up. Grow, yeah, exactly. Grow up, clean up, show up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I, I'm doing that by creating this, for instance. And I'm happy that you are here. And see you next week. And in case this week I cannot host any other uh, call because I have every evening, my evening is full. But in future weeks, I could do Thursday well. So, okay. And I would really like to be present and not, that means for you over there, you have to be in the morning and we have to be in the evening. It can be later for me. It can be eight or nine or so, but but not 12 o'clock, that's too late. <laughs> okay, thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>